Hey there everyone, welcome to the backend series. T and backend. So yes, in case you're wondering why there was so much of the gap in the backend videos, stuff happened and uh, we lost the recording of the content of almost four hours. And when we calculated it, it was more than four hours. So yes, stuff happens sometimes and it's really painful to see that uh, although we have mechanisms set up that we don't have these kinds of incidents, we don't lose that videos, uh, but yes, uh, stuff happened and all of the videos got corrupted and uh, it's not something that now we can play the blame game there. What happened is happened. Uh, the best thing that we can do is resume the series and re-record the videos. So yes, I am officially re-recording the content which got corrupted and uh, you are seeing the videos uh, after the registration form. We went up and saw the YouTube that at which point we need to set back our uh, commit history and all of that. So yes, that happened. And in order to put this much of effort, it really requires a lot of willpower that yes, I really want to re-record those content. Recording them once is okay, but re-recording the same content, yes, it requires motivation and for that I'm leaning on your side. Go ahead and put some comments in this video and I would love to re-record this video for you. But I need some more moral support and motivation from your side. So just put in the comment section that hey, uh, thanks for doing it again or we're watching this content. This makes me super happy. Anyways, let's go ahead and get started with the backend series again. Now that you know the backstory, how it got corrupted, probably we'll talk about in some another live sessions. That would be fun. But as of now, uh, let's go ahead and work with that. By the way, in case you are new here, go ahead and uh, join our Discord as well, hitesh.ai slash Discord. Uh, more than 50,000 fellow programmers are there who would love to help you around in case you are stuck here. And rest of the details, you can find that at chaikode.com. So go ahead and check that out. Now let me take you on to the screen, uh, the, the code part of it, and let's see that where we were and how we were doing it. So in case you notice, this is what we built in the last video. We already worked with our health controller. We also worked with our user controller. Now that we know flow of how the application works. First, we go ahead and write our controller for that. So we did that part, user registration form. So I'll just minimize that. You already have that piece of code. And after that, the next important part is setting up the routes. So we set up the routes with all the uh, all the middleware so that we can have the images and all these upload part. And once that is all being done, then we go ahead and uh, bring everything inside the app.js. So this is the app.js we bring up and routes goes like this. So this is really common part. And this is a very, very repeatable part. You will always do these kinds of stuff. Now my goal is to focus more on the controller side of it so that you can learn the uh, building logic part of it. A lot of people learn the logic for the very first time while watching the backend series. It has happened to my another channel as well. I'm sure this will happen to you as well. You will find yourself much more in control of writing the flows, the logics. Uh, it will build your logics and you will find yourself much more comfortable in JavaScript. So that's what we're gonna do. So registration part is done. Let's open up the user controller. Registration part is done. Now the next thing that I want to do is uh, having a login with the user. Now when we are logging in the user, we also have a mechanism to grab access token and refresh token. How we're going to use that, that's a little bit later part of it. But first we need to grab it. So if I go ahead and open up my model, especially the user model, you will notice we have some of the methods here uh, known as generate access token and generate refresh token. And please don't mind these codium. I just installed another uh, plugin here uh, for the AI assistant. I keep on checking. I'm re really very bullish these days on the AI. So I keep on checking different of the AI assistants and whatnot. So yes, they will help us in writing the code a little bit faster. In case you don't like that, that's okay. But it's the part where we are discussing the logic of it. So we want to utilize uh, this generate access token as well as generate refresh token. And if you notice very closely, these are defined on user schema. So if you have the access of any instance of user that is being created by the user schema, if somebody provides me that user ID, I can actually grab a user and once I have the instance of user, I am allowed to have, uh, I'm allowed to run all these methods like password check, generate ID and access tag. And while logging in the user, I definitely 100% want to generate these tokens as well. So what we're gonna do instead of creating a controller, first let's write a method in which you just pass on a user ID and once you give me the user ID, I will just generate these tokens and return you back those access token. Really simple task to do. So we're gonna go ahead and simply say, let's just go ahead and say generate access and refresh 
refresh. Is it spelling is correct? Hopefully. The spelling wise, I think it's really nice. And how we're going to access this is first of all, we need to do it async. So async part needs to be there. And once the async part is there, I'm expecting that somebody will pass me a user ID. Now, this is the required part. If I don't have user ID, I cannot query anything in the database. And that's what is required in this case. Let's go ahead and fire up a simple arrow function. I'll just go ahead and do it like this. Now, once I am in here, uh, the first step is to simply fire up a query so that maybe I can find the user. For this, we are going to take help of this user. And I think it would be really nice if I can add some space. I love these spacings. All right. The next step is to just uh, fire up a method that says user. And that can fire up a method that is find by ID. And I can just go ahead and pass on this user ID here. Now, once I actually pass on this ID, uh, this is a database connection. So that definitely needs to be awaited. Once that is being done, I can just go ahead and hold this into a variable. So let's just call this one as user. There we go. Now, once this part is done, and if I get the access to user or not, I can just go ahead and do check. I will leave this checking part to you. So if there is no user, it is really important that we fail safe on this method that, hey, we couldn't find the user. I leave this as a note to you to actually being done by you. I'm assuming that 100% I have got this one. So there's a small to do for you. A small check uh, for user. So this part is for you, user existence. Now we can just go ahead and throw the errors just like that, but that's your part. Now the next step is using this user, I want to generate uh, access token as well as uh, the access token and refresh token. So I can do that quickly by user dot and I can just go ahead and run the method which is a generate and I would love to copy that because I'm pretty sure I'll make a mistake. So this is my first one generate access token go ahead copy that and paste it up there. So there we go. This is the method I just go ahead and run this. There is another method just like this. I'll duplicate this and I'm going to go ahead and copy refresh token. So now that I have access to access token and refresh token. Uh, the next thing is uh, just hold them into a variable. We are going to call this one as access token, just like that. And we're going to go ahead and call this one as refresh token. There we go. Now, once I have this refresh token and access token, I would love to do a little bit more. I can return that here, just like AI is suggesting, but I want to do something more. Now, refresh token is something which we can attach to the user itself. As we check in the model as well, you're going to notice we have a field for it, which is refresh token. So this is something that we are storing for a longer run in our database. So it makes sense since we have this access to this user object, we can just go ahead and say, hey, user, you will have this refresh token directly up here. So refresh token, there we go. Now it's being attached, but it's not going to be done yet. We need to save the user as well. First of all, that needs to be await and then we can go ahead and save the user, but we cannot save it directly. There are validations in check, so it needs something more and that simple uh, validate validate before save and we're going to set it up false. Now, once we're done with this, now I can go ahead and return the access token and refresh token. There we go. Nice and easy. Nothing much worried. Now, what you're going to notice is this whole thing might fail. Yeah, there's a high chances of that, that it might fail up entire thing. So it's really wise that we wrap up this into a try catch block as well. So let's go ahead and select all of this, put up a try catch just like this. And there we go. Voila, everything is now inside the try catch block. This is how usually the code is being done calmly and assuming the syntax, you retrade the code, you sometimes uh, repurpose it and a whole bunch of other things you do. But in this case, it's okay. Now what we're going to do is once we're done with this, we can just go ahead and throw a simple new API error that says 500. Something went wrong while generating access and refresh token. I love AI for this. Helps me save so much time in having this. Now that our method is all done, hopefully it is working fine. Let's just go ahead and save this. You get the idea. This is just a helper function. Could have been done into some helper files as well. Uh, especially we have a folder utils could be done there, but I think it's not going to be used on hundreds of places. I just wanted to separate out some of the logics like that. Now let's go ahead and create another route. This will not be helper method. This will be route. So I'll just go ahead and say login user and that login user will come with the async handler and it's going to be async request response just like that. And I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up like that. All right, uh, looks good. And probably there is some issue with this async handler. And I guess that's the issue. Yep, now happy. Async handler in itself is just a function and there we go. Now we have to write like what I really want to do with this login user. So let's uh, plan a strategy for that. First strategy is get uh, 
uh, data from body. That's usually the first step. That's my first part. Let's also do that one by one so that we know what we are doing. Let's go ahead and grab uh, some of the stuff from request.body and depends on what you are expecting from the user, username, email, whatever you are expecting while the login form works. And everybody's login form is a bit different. Mine is just simple. I'll just go ahead and say request.body. That is good enough. Now, it depends on the validation that whether you are expecting that email should be 100% there or username should be 100% there, you can go ahead and run uh, these checks. I'll just run one simple check. If there is no, uh, I'll go with the email only. So if there is no email, just go ahead and we'll simply uh, send up an error. So throw new API error that says email is required. You can go ahead and do same things with the and or or check, depends you are asking for username also, or you are asking for password also, all those fields. I think you can do that. My job is to make sure that you understand the part of it. Now, just like we did in the register user as well, that we checked for the existing user. Now we need to check this user and we can actually borrow this exact code. And this code actually checks based on username or the email, we'll just borrow this code. Oh, that's a big, big method. We'll just shrink this, come back here. And there we go, we'll borrow this code. Instead of checking for existing user, we're gonna call this one as simple user. So we simply await user.find1. I want to find a user based either on username or the email, you just give me that. Now, if we don't find this user, then the problem is there. So if we don't find the user, then simply we can go ahead and throw the error that, hey, I couldn't find the user, that's really uh, awesome. But once the user is there, what should be my next step? The next step is, hey, we have successfully acquired the user, now let's validate whether the password that was passed to me by user and what's stored in my database are the same or not. So we're gonna go ahead and say validate password. Now, how do we do that? It's actually comparatively very, very simple to check the password part of it. All you gotta do is await. Now, since you have access to this user, you can go ahead and use this is password correct. And again, don't rely on the AI, just like I'm doing it. Go up here and check is password correct. Yep, that's the method. I would love to copy this. What does it need? It needs a password to be there. Now, as you can notice, AI is definitely helping us, but I don't want to rely too much on the logic so that I don't know what's happening. So go ahead, logic. It sometimes helps you to think faster and think out loud. So we're gonna go ahead and say, is password correct? And now it's being uh, get by like this, await user password. So if the password is not correct or correct, or I'll just go ahead and use valid is password valid. Again, naming convention, whatever you want to use. Now I can just go ahead and say, if password is not valid, then we're gonna go ahead and throw an error, invalid user credentials. You can give more precise message, invalid user credentials, invalid credentials, totally up to you. But if the password is correct, that means we will reach to line number 143. Now is the time that we go ahead and generate or take help from our helper method to generate the access token and refresh token. So I can just go ahead and say, go ahead and grab the access token and refresh token. And most important part is this access token refresh token takes user dot underscore ID because we are using MongoDB. So IDs are stored just like this. So make sure you take care of that. Once you have access to this, now we need to actually log in the user. And uh, what we're gonna do is get the user document again. And uh, now we have access to this user ID, we can get it again. But uh, you can actually use the existing one as well because we have this user. But it would be nice because we have actually added more field into the refresh. So there are two strategies in front of us. Either take this existing user and add this refresh token and then create an object or just fire a database query and grab the fresh object since this generate access token, again go ahead and save new data in the database. So I would say, Yes, it is definitely an extra query, but it's a fail safe query. Uh, it will help you to secure the system more. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, let's go ahead and say, uh, we're gonna grab a logged in user and I'm gonna fire up a database query. Await, if I can write that. Await find by user and I'm gonna go ahead and say user dot underscore ID. I'm gonna find that, but I'll also go ahead and use something more. I'll just go ahead and chain it with the select method it helps you to select particular fields. And most importantly, it's not being used for selection, it's actually being used for deselection. How do I do that? It's actually relatively simple. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, what I want to do is, let me go ahead and chain this in the next line. It's much easier that way. I'll use select, and this is not my favorite part, but this is how it's being done. You have to say negative, and then whatever the field you want 
don't want to select. So yeah, that's, and again, this is a long string, not a comma separated string. I would love it to at least be comma or an array field, but hey, I'm not deciding the syntax. And again, another thing is refresh token. I don't want refresh token. Now the result that will come to you after this query is going to be a user object, which doesn't have the password field and the refresh token field. If this method has worked successfully, the value that I'm getting from the user is going to be nice. It's wise here that if we go ahead and check in whether we have logged in user or not, that again is a good check and you do that check in the most of the production grade application. As you can see, it's being suggested. I leave that again as a small exercise for you to do. Now let's go ahead and create some options because now I want to send all these logged in user details to be sent to the user. Uh, let's go ahead and prepare some options for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and say these are my options and this is just a basic object, JavaScript object. And the first method that we're gonna go ahead and do is HTTP only true. This makes the cookie non-modifiable by the client side. I just can only modify this. And again, you can also have more options like secure. If the environment is production, then the secure is automatically going to be true and is going to be false in case you are just testing it because while the development side, you want to test them out, check them out, manipulate them. Common standard practice, nothing much to beat around. All right, this is being done. Now the last step that is there is to send all of this data. I know this looks along, but hey, we are just following the flow that happens and every single time you're gonna be rolling out your own auth, this is how you go work with that. Now, let's go ahead and return this response. So we're gonna go ahead and return response and response is going to be dot status. First of all, you want to send the status. I'll go ahead and send a status of 200. Now I'm gonna go ahead and hit an enter just before this dot so that I can have all these data just like this. All right. So first status is being returned. Now I would love to return a cookie just like this. And in the cookie, I would love to set an access token with the access token and along with the options that I mentioned in the line 149. So there we go, that part is all done. I would also like to set another cookie for the refresh token as well. So I can just go ahead and set another cookie for the refresh token as well. And once I'm done with this refresh token as well, so both are being set on the cookies. And you can also send these all details to the user as well so that maybe he wants to access. Refresh token usually is being set in the cookie only, uh, not being sent to the user, but depends whether you're working on mobile devices or just on the web, uh, things change drastically in that case. Now, once we are done with this, then we are sending the API response, simple JSON. We are creating a new API response with the 200 of the, uh, the response code. Then we are also sending the access login logged in access user, and we're also sending all these details. Now it's up to you how you want to send it. One more way I would love to walk you through with that is, let's go ahead and remove this part and make it more readable. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that, hey, you know what, this API response is going to go like this, and this will go like this, there we go. Now it's much more readable. So now, once we have this 200, I would like to send an object, and this object will have a user, and in the user, we will have logged in user, access token and refresh token, just because maybe I'm assuming you are also designing a mobile app. In the mobile app, you cannot set the cookies. That's by default how mobile apps works. And then I will also send them a user logged in. So if client decide to have the response on their own, I want to handle my refresh token on my own, that's what you can do. This is the point where you actually interact and talk with your front end team and the mobile team and see that, hey, this is how I'm uh, crafting that I will send the response. Do you want to be manipulated? Do you want me to send the refresh token? Keeping the security and everything in mind. If you don't want me to send it, that's okay, fine as well. So I hope now you got the idea of how this is being done. Although this method looks really, really long, but it is not. It's just a simple basic way of how, the hand how to handle the things one by one. Once we're done with this, obviously the next step is to just export this so that we can use it. That's it, logged in user. In the next video, we're gonna go ahead and work through uh, with the next steps. So I'll walk you through how the logout feature works and more of the refresh token and how we can refresh the access token using the refresh token. That is also a key ingredient of having these much of tokens. Uh, we'll work through with that. So let's go ahead and meet up in the next video. Don't forget the comments. It's really, really required, at least uh, for these re-recording of the videos or share this on the Twitter or click a photo, share on Instagram. I really need that. That's it for this one. Let's catch up in the next one.